Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay. This is a continuation of the live streaming techniques presentation, which we did an earlier meetup. And that presentation, we uh, showcased uh, a few HTTP based streaming techniques and shared code for how to use them. They include Dash and HLS. For this one, we'll showcase a real time streaming tool, RTSP and RTP, and how you can use it with a server and a client. I'll go ahead and actually start my camera as well. So the, the reason I say real time as opposed to live is because with HLS, there is a, a slight lag and with dash as well, and you can minimize the lag with, with techniques, but it's not designed to be real time. It's designed to be live. Whereas RTC, RTSP, for example, is uh, real time. The example I'll show uses this uh, particular tool. It's a really good uh, simple implementation of an RTSP server that can ingest RTSP and RTMP and like publish them as well. And they can also re-encode and publish HLS. So it makes it really easy to embed the live streams or, or recordings and or do recordings in your app. The server is written in Go, so it can be compiled directly into a machine code. It's uh, standalone, has no dependencies. So it's very easy to use. You can almost, you can use it everywhere as I'll show now. Really to get started, all you have to do is uh, either use the Docker image or download one of these uh, binaries. And you can see those Darwin, Linux, and uh, Windows binaries. There's for all different kinds of V6, V7, and, and 64 V8. I'll go ahead and... So to show you, for example, how to start, all you have to do is download that binary and essentially on it is an executable. And that's pretty much uh, it. Now you have an RTSP server running. And uh, the client code is extremely simple, as you can see. And the reason I'm showing it like this is because you can do this in any language. You can write the standard in, in any language. But there's a couple of cl crucial parameters here. For one, for the variable frame rate. If you're processing and potentially doing AI and computer vision and really streaming, chances are the speed at which you able to process is dependent, is correlated with how many objects are in the video, how many faces are in the video. So that frame rate will change. Also things like the encoding. If for example, your camera is already streaming in H.264 or H.265, let's say H.264, then you don't really have to really encode the video. You can just put copy here and this will make the encoding process very fast. If not, you'll have to account for that on the recording side and the encoding side. The timestamp as well, if you want your videos to have the timestamp, you should essentially make sure to copy it. But that's, that's all there is to it. And I've tested streaming with, with this client code for 48 hours continuous using a sub $40 camera from Amazon. So it's extremely stable. And I'll go ahead and start it as an example. So I'll actually show this first. I printed a simple mag, like magnet, like mag holder and did another one for the other side of the camera and just put it on the wall and used it to mount uh, an IX camera. Essentially uh, printed another side for the back of the camera, put it in the wall. So just a magnetic mount that I can attach the camera to. And so basically the steaming code I just showed is this, the test pipe. As you can see, it uh, starts, settles on 30 frames a second. And the, you can see the server here ingesting and processing the video and recording. And if I go to VLC, for example, I can open this local host stream that I'm streaming to. As you can see, this is the thermal stream and it's real time. If there's any lag on this, it's the AI stream on the camera side, but it's, it's extremely stable, like I said, and very easy to use, as you can see. Now to note something in the configuration, it has extremely uh, extensive configuration. You can add password authentication, SSL, essentially everything you would need for a production RTSP server. The one uh, thing I'd like to point out here is this uh, particular command on unpublish. So whenever a publisher connect this command executes, 
And the command essentially codes the RTSP stream. If you look at the, it might be at the end. Oh yeah, actually for the codec, I'm using copy since I was already encoding. I'm assured that regardless of the codec that the camera is streaming and I can essentially just copy on the, on the recording side of the server because my client is, is transcoding the video as it's processing it to H.264, which is essentially needed for you to do HLS and to display videos. This HLS flag uh, append list plus delete segments just builds the list HLS list automatically that allows you to stream the video or, or show the recording, for example, and you can specify the duration of the segment and how many segments to save. And uh, this will tell you, for example, the duration of time you're recording, like the past 24 hours or a week, et cetera. And as you can see here, I'm uh, defining how to essentially store the recording and the file system based on the name of the stream, et cetera. And what this does is it builds the HLS list automatically, appends to it automatically every time there's a video and deletes automatically every time the max size is there. And uh, what's cool by HLS is uh, you can use it for real time search as well. So that very same list, uh, you can use it to fast forward and back between videos or to show any particular timestamp that matches a particular detection, for example. The obvious use case for this is surveillance and general security streaming, uh, but I'll show another use case that's uh, uh, somewhat interesting. Can you guys still see my camera? Is it zoomed in? Yes, it's zooming in. I have an example. I can make it do something as an example. My initial intuition when I got it was to make an AI to do something with it. But then lately I had an idea that it would be much easier to allow someone to, to kind of control it with an Xbox controller. And uh, for example, I can hire a chef in Morocco that knows what he's doing and have him essentially cook food all the way from Morocco here. And I have a controller here. I've tested this with essentially a Bluetooth controller as well. But the cool thing about it is there's support for these controllers in the browser now automatically, which basically would allow me to make a true SaaS where someone can just come to a browser and then be able to control it automatically without having to install anything. Everything is completely in the browser. The needed thing for this as well is for the controller to be able to see what he's controlling. So you can take the RTSP server as is, drop it on the cloud and essentially uh, use it to stream and allow uh, robotic process automation or like remote control. And how this works now is there's a Python SDK. I'm not gonna try to control it now, but uh, there's a socket that essentially just listens to these commands and then uses the Python SDK to control it. That's uh, pretty much it on uh, my side. Any questions? We don't have any questions in the chat 